Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to lesson three of the CompTIA Network Plus course. If this is your first time watching one of my Network Plus videos, this course is based on the N10-008 version of N Plus. In this video, as you guys can see, this one is all about copper cabling types. And the first topic we're going to be talking about with regards to copper cabling types is Ethernet cables. So some of you guys might know these as network cables. Some of you guys might know them as good old fashioned LAN cables. Now with regards to Ethernet cables, there's two kinds you get. The first one is unshielded twisted pair, also known as UTP. Another one is shielded twisted pair, also known as STP. So there's two kinds. The first one is unshielded. The second one is shielded. Now, as you guys can see my little pictures that I've got there for you, the first one has just eight wires and they normally come in pairs of two, which are generally twisted around one another, which is one of the reasons why we call this twisted pair. The second cable there has a bit of a tin foil around it. So sometimes it's foil, sometimes it's braided wire. In some cases, it might actually be both. Now, that picture is actually a bit of both. It's still twisted pair, so it's still eight wires, still twisted around one another. Alrighty, so let's go have a bit of a deeper look into our first cable here on the list being unshielded twisted pair. Now this unshielded twisted pair cable is actually the most common kind of cable you'll get when it comes to networking. At least at this point in time it is. So first of all, it's obviously a type of copper cabling used in telephone wiring and local area networks. Now, you guys are most likely going to be using this for the most part in local area networks, but can also be used in telephone wiring. As I've said, this is the most common type of network cable used. So STP is not uncommon, the second one, but UTP is the most common kind of cable you're going to get. So if you go to your average household that happens to have a network in it, if you go to your average small to medium or even large enterprise companies, the majority of network cables you're going to come across are in fact not just Ethernet but more specifically UTP. So if you were to go and grab one of those and you were to go and cut them open, what you would find is just the eight wires. Maybe a little bit of thread but just eight wires. No foil around them. Now some alternative cables to UTP cable would be cables like your good old fashioned coaxial cable, which is actually a very old kind of cable, very, very old kind of cable, and something more recent and newer like fiber optic cable. Now I like fiber optic cable, but it's a bit of a mission to work with it and it's quite expensive to work with that. Now there's actually a reason why UTP cable is probably one of the most common kind of cables you're gonna get. Now, as you know, all cables have benefits and they all have their own drawbacks. So there's pros and cons to all of them. And if you were to go and look at pretty much any company, UTP tends to be the cable they favor. Obviously, we've established that. Why? Because it's low cost and because of its ease of installation. It costs next to nothing. Well, if you were to go and compare them to other cables, it costs next to nothing. And it's pretty straightforward to go and install. The tools you need are very easy to come by. They are very low cost and the cable itself is low cost and you really don't need a doctor science degree to be able to go and install one of these cables. If you go just up one click in the notch and you go look at something like STP perhaps, that is a little bit more tricky to go and install. Crimping the cable, if you know what that is, is pretty much the same, but the little tinfoil shield you guys saw in the picture earlier, that actually needs to be grounded in most cases, otherwise it doesn't really serve its purpose. So that brings us to our next topic now, obviously, which is shielded twisted pair cable. Now, obviously, we have already established that with shielded twisted pair cable, it's got a little outer covering or shield, which functions as a ground or ordinary twisted pair. So that little shield needs to be grounded. So the whole idea of the shield is obviously to prevent some sort of interference from the outside, or at least to try and mitigate it as best as possible. Now, if you're not going to go and ground that little shield to something, it's not really going to serve its purpose. So it is a good thing to keep in mind that you need to actually go and ground that tinfoil. I know many technicians that know that shielded twisted pair is used to prevent interference. 
And what most folks will go and do is they will go and crimp an STP cable exactly like a UTP cable, not knowing that you should actually go and ground a little tin foil for it to actually function properly or to reap its benefits. If you're not going to go and ground it, you're not really going to reap the benefits of it. So that brings me to my second point here. The shield grounds the wires further to reduce crosstalk or electromagnetic and radio frequency interference. Now the crosstalk is not just prevented by the little shield. That's one of the reasons why you would see that these wires are twisted around one another when they're in pairs. So you would find your green and green wire not twisted around one another. Same for orange, same for blue, and same for brown. Why is that? Why are they twisted around one another? It is to help mitigate interference or prevent interference. So because they're always facing away, they are effectively canceling, canceling out the interference for the most part. You're never going to completely stop it, but you are for the most part reducing it and canceling it out. So it's going to prevent crosstalk, which is basically just when the wires interfere with one another. So each wire has a tiny little, I suppose you can call it a little magnetic field and all that around each of them. And if they are close to one another, they're effectively going to influence one another. They're going to interfere with one another. And if we were to go and twist them around one another, it tends to kind of cancel that whole effect out. So that's one of the benefits of twisting them around one another. All right, and then our next point here, which I assume you guys probably would have figured out by now, STP cables are more expensive and harder to install than UTP cable. Obviously, we know it's harder to install because I literally just told you guys, you need to actually go and ground that little tin foil. So the little shield, if it's not grounded, it's not really going to give you any benefit. So that is why it's a little bit harder to go and install it. It's a little bit more work is what we're saying. Now these cables tend to cost more in most cases as well. I'm not going to say that's always the case. I have honestly had cases where I'll go to a store, even something as, as simple as a local computer store, where the UTP cable and the STP cable would actually cost the exact same price. That's not something you would encounter normally. I was just lucky, I think, in my case. So that's why I'm saying I'm not going to throw them all in the same boat here. But usually, if you were to go online, to distributor, to your local store, wherever you get your UTP and STP cables from, what you are going to notice is STP tends to cost you a lot more per inch, per meter, or whatever system you go and measure these in. All right, guys, and then lastly, the main difference between UTP being unshielded and STP being shielded is their design, but their purpose remains the same. They provide reliable connectivity and communications. So they both serve the same purpose. So at the end of the day, once you've connected these and you've crimped them and you've configured them and whether you need to ground them or not, potato, potato, Either way, they would connect one device to another device. In the old days, we would just say one computer to another computer, but as you probably know by now, nobody just uses computers these days. It might be a phone, it might be a tablet, laptop, desktop, it could be a printer, it could be a scanner, it could be a server, uh, it could be an access point, it could be a router, it could be a switch. I mean, there's so many devices you can actually go and connect to an edu cable. Of our phones and tablets that, that you're going to have to go and connect to an access point, but it's still connected to an edu cable indirectly if you think about it. So, at the end of the day, it's going to serve its purpose, which is giving you connectivity and communication. So, all you need to remember here is shielded costs you more, they're harder to install, and it gives you benefits like preventing crosstalk and preventing interference. So, if you find yourself in an environment, let's say it's your company, Maybe it's your client's company and there's a lot of interference there, then you might want to consider getting yourself an STP cable. So UTP cable will serve for your everyday purpose, but if you find that your network cables are going to run parallel with your, with your power cables, I would suggest you go and use STP cables because those are going to prevent the interference you're going to encounter from your power cables. If you, for example, find that your network cables are going to run in the roof and they're going to go near lights, more specifically fluorescent lights, you might want to consider once again your STP. Now, I know sometimes we can avoid it, sometimes we cannot avoid it. So if you know your cables are going to go near fluorescent lights in the roof and you just cannot avoid that, then get yourself STP. If your network cables are going to perhaps go near some sort of heavy machinery, 
any form of heavy machinery, especially if they pull a lot of amps, if you know what amps is, those tend to give off a lot of magnetic fields and EMI is obviously a lot there as well, electromagnetic interference. So any place where there might be any form of high interference, your go-to cable is most likely going to be STP. You can also potentially go and use something like fiber. There's absolutely no interference on fiber at all because it doesn't use copper. Fiber uses glass. So we're not going to go into fiber now. That's going to be a different lesson. There's going to be a specific video just for fiber. But what I will mention at this point in time is if you are concerned with interference, fiber might be an option to consider. You need to also consider the fact that fiber is very expensive, hard to implement, expensive to implement, and well, just plain difficult, hard and difficult, I suppose, is the same thing. Another kind of cable you can potentially go and use, which I do not recommend, is coaxial cable. It does come with a shield, and well, I suppose to a certain extent it will go and mitigate these interferences, but coaxial is very old. Not a lot of devices support coaxial anymore. So that brings us to our next topic and our last topic in this video for today, which is coaxial cable. So you can see there's a nice little picture there for you guys. You can see what they more or look like. Now they're actually used for many things, but one of the main things these coaxial cables are used for these days is TVs. It's not the only thing they use for, it's just the main thing and pretty much the only thing we still use them for. So they're specifically built with a metal shield and other components engineered to block signal interference. It's a very old kind of cable. Now it normally has like a solid core, which is most commonly made out of copper, solid copper, that's the best kind you can get. So if you find a solid copper core, you're good to go. That's the best quality you can get. Now you might get some of them that's not a good, that doesn't have a solid copper core, it might just be copper plated. Still reasonably okay, but it's not going to give you the same quality. Uh, if you are going to find what is just copper plated, you might be want to be careful if you're going to go and cut it. Do not cut it with a normal cable crimper. So we can, if you have yourself a network cable crimper um, tool, you would normally use it to go and crimp your network cables. I do not recommend using one of those to go and crimp or cut your coaxial cables. If it's normal solid copper cable, then you can try. I would still not recommend it, but you can try because the copper is a lot softer. It's a very good conductor. It carries signal better. It carries electricity better, but it's also softer. So you should kind of be okay when it comes to cutting it. That little razor blade you use to cut the, the copper should be okay. But if you're going to go and use a solid steel tip or one that's copper plated, I do not recommend it because that's the best way but the quickest way you're going to mess up that razor blade. So you're going to totally mess up that blade if you're going to try and cut one of those cables a bit. So besides the little solid copper core, you're going to find this little tin foil and there's also a little braiding around it, which is generally also made out of copper. It could potentially be made out of something else. So if it's made out of anything else other than copper, it's still a conductor, but the signal is not as good and it's not going to carry power as good. So your best bet would get would be to go and get yourself one that's made completely out of copper. The price is, however, obviously going to go up as well if it's made completely out of copper. Now, once again, what do we actually use these cables for? Mostly used by TV companies. So if you look at behind the average TV, especially the older TVs, you'd find that there's a cable you can go and plug in there for, well, your antenna, cable TV or anything like that. That cable, believe it or not, is actually coaxial cable. Now you get many kinds of coaxial cables. Some of them are thin, some of them are thick. They come with many kinds of connectors. Now, if you're wondering about the connectors, do not stress. That's also going to be a video on its own. So it's going to be a dedicated video where we're going to be discussing network cable connectors, telephone cable connectors, coaxial cable connectors, fiber cable connectors. All of that will be in a dedicated video for you guys. So I'm going to put it out in this video. It's going to be too long and it's not going to be a bite-sized video exactly now, is it? So what you need to know is there is different kinds of coaxial cables used for different purposes. Now, something you guys might not be aware of is coaxial cables used to actually be a backbone back in the day. Backbone is the main cable you use to link one part of a network to another part of the network. So if you want to link one building to another building, that one cable would be your backbone. Or if I've got, let's say, one department that's got a switch in it, and there's a bunch of pieces in that department, and then I've got another department with a switch of a bunch of pieces, that's connected to that respective switch. If I would like to go and link those two switches to one another with one cable, that one cable is going to carry all the load from both departments. What do we call that one main cable? That is your backbone. 
Not the topic today, but what I do want to point out is that backbone used to be a coaxial cable. So if any of you guys are lucky enough to have a very old switch lying around from 15, 20 or more years ago, you would find that it's got about one or two, maybe sometimes four, weird little circular ports on it. That is because that used to be used for the backbone. If you go look at your newer switches these days, they'll have their normal RJ45 ports, which is your network ports, Ethernet cables. But then they also have like maybe two or four weird, weird square looking ports. What are those used for? That is used for fiber. So fiber has now replaced coaxial cable as the backbone. Much more reliable and obviously way quicker than what coaxial can be. Now, it doesn't mean all companies will go and use fiber because it's very expensive and difficult to go and implement. The average company will just go and use good old-fashioned gigabit cable to go and get the job done. Um, but if you really do need fiber, in some cases like in a server room, then, well, the option is there. You can go make use of it. All right, guys, I hope you have learned something today. If you have, remember to give this video a like. It does help me. It does help the video. And if you'd like to know when I upload more free content like this, remember to also subscribe to the channel. And if there's any one of you guys that would like to support me so I can create more free content like this, you can find all of that information in the video description down below. And that reminds me, I want to give a special shout out and thank you to my current supporters. At the moment, I only have one, believe it or not. So a special thank you to Todd O'Connor, like usual, for supporting the channel. Hopefully, there will be more of you guys soon. All right, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next lesson. Bye.